morning. Please stand. Lord, in thy kingdom, Lord, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit, Father. We celebrate today Mass of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Traditionally, we call it Mass of Christ the King. We celebrate and acknowledge Christ as our King, our Messiah, our Shepherd. So we pray at this Mass that you may have the grace to become loyal members of the flock of Christ. At this Mass, we pray for the intentions recommended for Cleo Gallardo, Adam James Pena, Elma Achulera, for the speedy recovery of Matthew Benavides, and as we also pray for all our parishioners, those of you here and all who have joined us online. But as sinners in need of God's mercy, let us ask for his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Jesus 
Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right 
and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then the we answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them. Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of the least ones, you did not do for me. And these we go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. The good news that I share with you today is that Christ is our King, Christ is our Good Shepherd. As our King, He leads us. As our Shepherd, He guards us. So our prayers today will be for the grace to be loyal members of the flock of Christ so that we can enjoy his provision and enjoy his protection. For us as people who live in the secular society, the concept of kingship appears anachronistic and at best tyrannical. Therefore, it will be worth the while asking why the church chose to celebrate this last Sunday in her church's year as one of Christ the universal king. It will be important to know that this solemnity developed in the early part of the 20th century. 
And there was something happening in the world at that time that the church responded by instituting this solemnity. It was a time the world was drifting into extreme forms of nationalism and forms of dictatorships were springing up from every corner of the globe, making it impossible for people of faith to live their lives freely and joyfully in those various societies. So in instituting this Sunday as the Sunday of Christ the King, the church was trying to give some guidelines on to believers on how they can live their lives regardless of the society where they find themselves in. Now, our present day society appears also to be drifting into that territory of a secularist dictatorship where there are also emerging all forms of political and economic dictatorships. In this secularist dictatorship, people of faith are suppressed that they find it difficult to live their faith in the secular society. And various ways that people are now being told what to do and what not to do, where to do them and where not to do them. And you all can testify that this is the bane of the conflict that we are having in our society today. That nobody should tell me how to live, how not to live, whether to wear a mask or not to wear a mask, or go to church or not to go to church. So there's that conflict because of what we have seen as extreme forms of secularist dictatorships and all the rest of them. So it means also that the celebration of today is very relevant for us to also sit and ask ourselves, how can we be authentically Christians in a world as this, in a world drifting in these ways? Now, as people of faith, we know that the coming of Christ was prophesied as the coming of the Messiah who will come in the line of David. Simply, it tells us he's going to be king. We also know that when he was born, there were three magi from the east who came to visit. And the question they were asking was what? Where is the newborn king? We saw his star and who have come to pay him homage. So they already proclaimed him a king even at infancy. We also know that the ministry of Jesus was so unique that people were asking, there is something different here. He speaks with authority. He commands even evil spirits and they run away. And they were looking at Jesus and said, perhaps he is the one we have been waiting for. And when at last he multiplied the loaves and fed the thousands of people, they decided to rush to make him king. But all those he resisted. That even though he resisted them, we recall what we celebrate on Palm Sunday, a reenactment of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and that entry was regal in nature, was so kingly, and everything about it was royal. And on, when he was being tried under Pontius Pilate, Pilate asked him, are you the king? And at that time, Jesus said, yes, for this I came into the world. But he did not end it there by accepting being king. He offered some clarifications. When he said, but my kingship is not the type of this world. Then going further, he said, that all who are on the side of truth, listen to him. So this helps us to know that there is a deeper meaning of the kingship of Christ and the kingdom Christ has come to inaugurate in our world. What are those differences? 
Number one, unlike the kings of this world, the kingship of Christ is not limited by any geographical boundaries. The kingship of Christ and the kingdom of Christ is not limited by any walls. Equally, the kingship of Christ is not limited by any length of tenure. Four years, six years, eight years, or life kingship or life presidency. The kingship of Christ is eternal. Thirdly, the kingship of Christ is not spread or defended by arms and ammunition. Because if you recall, when he was being, you know, flogged and spat on, and he said, I could ask God and he would send me legions of angels to stop this. But he said, how can God's will be done? So the kingship of Christ, the kingdom of Christ is not one that is expanded, that is grown or defended with the use of arms and ammunition. The kingship of Jesus Christ is a spiritual reality. It's a spiritual reality that we choose to be under or we choose to ignore. But we choose to be under it or ignoring it depending on our relationship with the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus said, I'm the truth. So our relationship with Christ depends whether we submit to loyalty or whether we resist the authority of Christ. Therefore, as we celebrate today, the solemnity of Christ, the king of the universe, we are not celebrating the fact that we live in Jesus' country. We are not celebrating the fact that we live in the Jesus' time or Jesus' era. What we are celebrating is that we live our lives guided by the Spirit of Christ, that we listen to his voice, that we obey his words. What we celebrate as we mark today as the solemnity of Christ, the universal king, is that we are inclined to the truth. So it does not matter whether we live under a democracy or we live under a dictatorship. It does not matter the economic system we live under, whether capitalism or communism. It does not matter our personal life orientations and social persuasions that we embrace. It doesn't matter. Because the kingship of Christ is not limited geographically. It's not limited by time. It's not limited by ideologies. It's a spiritual reality which we accept to be loyal to or resist depending on our relationship with the truth. So what matters is that every day we are answering the question if we are doing what Jesus wants. And what does Jesus want? He wants us to live lives that promote the enthronement of the reign of justice, the reign of peace, the reign of love, the reign of joy, the reign of truth. Every day we ask ourselves that question. So we are showing our aspiration to be loyal to the kingship of Christ. And it's very important for us to ask ourselves these questions every day. Why? Because as the gospel has told us, there will be a day to give account. There will be a day of judgment, a day of separation. 
those who have been loyal and those who have not been loyal. A day will come for that. Also, the beautiful thing in this is the fact that that judgment script is already with us. We already know it. And this judgment script is about how we respond to the terms of charity, especially to those in need. The hungry, the thirsty, those naked. These are the things we learn on that the corporal works of mercy. But it's basically needs. And our response in charity attends to those needs. But there is that tendency in many people to limit this sense of need to these corporal works without also paying attention to the spiritual needs, the spiritual works, like instructing the ignorant, forgiving offenses, admonishing sinners, counseling the doubtful. These needs are very important and may even trump the other needs. Why do I say that? A lot of the problems we have in our world today come from the fact that many people are ignorant. A lot of the things that conflicts we are living under is because a lot of people are doubtful about the, what the other person is doing, where the other person is trying to lead us. A lot of the things that are happening in our world today come from the fact that a lot of us have deadened their consciences that they no longer know what is sinful, what is wrong. So our ability to instruct the ignorance, to forgive offenses, admonish sinners, and counsel the doubtful, go a long way into solving the need of our world today beyond the bread and clothing and drinks. So all of these are important. They are all the needs that people are going into, they are having. And if we can reach out in the spirit of charity to those needs, we are equally showing our loyalty to Christ. And when we live in this spirit of loyalty, there are two things that happen. Number one, as the first reading brings to our attention, Christ our King is also our Good Shepherd. He leads us, He guides us, and our psalm today tells us, The Lord is my shepherd, nothing I shall want. He leads me beside flowing waters. You know, it's about always taking care of me. So when we are loyal to our king, we can enjoy him being our shepherd to guide us. And it is very important to think deeply about that because many of us are living under very, very difficult situations. Maybe difficulties in the family, maybe difficulties in the workplace, maybe difficult in trying to understand what is happening in our country today. We have a shepherd, Christ the King, and only loyalty to him can begin to take us out from the clutches that are holding us. The next thing that happens to us equally when we show our loyalty to our King is as the second reading was also trying to talk about He's going to be our champion because there are forces, there are attacks, there are persecutions happening in one way or the other. But as the second reading says, he will be victorious. He's our king that will be victorious. So my dear friends, let us today celebrate this feast as it ought to be. As I said, it doesn't matter 
under what political ideology we live in, under what economic ideology that is followed by our states, our nations, or the personal orientations that we imbibe and embrace, it doesn't matter. You can be who you are. You can come from where you come from. You can think in any ideological plane. Christ will be your king if you are loyal to his word. If you follow his voice and if you walk for the enthronement of a kingdom of justice, peace, joy, and truth. Amen. Also today, we will be recommissioning all those who have been prepared to continue to help us in the church as extraordinary ministers of the Holy Eucharist. And we know the importance of the Holy Eucharist in our lives and in our church. This is the body and blood of Christ. And we are members of the body and blood of Christ. The Eucharist defines us. But it also solidifies our relationship with Christ and the entire Christian community. So we pray for these people who have accepted to continue to help us in this ministry. So if you are for recommissioning, please stand where you are. These are brothers and sisters have been entrusted with the important duty of distributing Holy Communion to themselves, to their fellow Christians, and of bringing Holy Communion and Viaticum to the sick and those in danger of death. You, my brothers and sisters, have been chosen for an important office, and you must now strive more earnestly than ever to live the Christian life, to give good, good example, to take your faith more seriously, and to be devoted to this great mystery, which beautifully signifies the unity of the church and wonderfully brings it about. We who share this one bread become one body in Christ Jesus. Since you give the Eucharist to your brothers and sisters in Christ, you must try to practice that fraternal charity which was commanded by our Lord. He gave his body as food to his disciples and told them, this then is what I command you, love one another. So I ask you these questions. Are you resolved to undertake this office of giving the body of Christ to your brothers and sisters for the service and the growth of the church? Are you resolved to reverence and care for the Eucharist which you will administer? My brothers and sisters, now let us pray to God our Father that these our brothers and sisters chosen to administer the body of Christ may be filled with his blessings. And so may we stretch our hands towards them. Father of mercy, source of all grace and blessing, bless these, our brothers and sisters. May they faithfully distribute the sacrament to their brothers and sisters, May they be strengthened and comforted by it and one day be found worthy to share in the everlasting meal of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Here we come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now call to mind the needs of the church and our world, bringing our concerns also confidently before God's throne. That the church proclaim the good news of God's reign let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That wealthy nations seek practical ways to relieve the crushing debt of poor countries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That the hungry be fed, the homeless find haven, the lonely be comforted, and those in prison know true freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community of faith be to one another a source of strength in trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose ministries and contributions help to support and grow our parish, that God will continue to bless and prosper them in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For the intentions we celebrate at this Mass, Cleo Gallardo, Adam James Pena, Elmer Archuleta, for a speedy recovery of Matthew Benavides, for the people of the parish, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. May God graciously hear us through the sacred heart of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty and everlasting God, until the day when we, you gather us into your reign, grant what we ask by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and of peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, Father. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as the eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made, may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessings and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the seventh passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Stephen our Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you and all who have joined us from their homes online at this Mass. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, especially those whom we remember this month. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May we show the sign of peace to one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Holy Communion, you remember, we come to you from the sides, and when you receive, you go back to your pews from the empty pew in front of you.
An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you in our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you were already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. The Word made flesh, the light from light, a cry that pierced our endless noise, a child to speak into our pain, restoring unto us our joy to teach our hearts and heal our wounds replace our doubt with heaven's truth the broken healed the lost redeemed the beauty of our christ the king the 
silence of the grave no stone could keep the love of god from the ones he came to save and so in power and radiant light he vanquished death and rose to life now with the heavens i will sing the glory of our christ the king our prayer after communion lord jesus christ thank you for feeding me with your most holy body and blood today may this food from heaven be my source of healing from all spiritual and bodily discomfort may it be my strength and defense against all sin and temptation may it fill me with the grace to imitate you who are all good and deserving of my love and thanksgiving so that my presence everywhere i go today will reflect your honor and glory and bring comfort and joy to all I meet, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Is there anyone who celebrates this week, baptism, birthday, or wedding anniversaries? May we pray for them. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you for the lives of these, your children, who this week mark these great milestones in their lives and who ask for your blessings. We pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be with them to bless them, to protect them, to prosper their ways and the works of their hands, so that after their lives here on earth, they may be among those to share around your altar of praise in heaven. And may your blessing be on them, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. From 5 p.m. today, the city of Alamosa goes under code red. The implication is that a lot of the things we do in the public square will be restricted. It does not affect our worship because we can still have 50 people inside the church. So we still continue to worship. However, we have a responsibility not just to be safe ourselves, but also to help other people to be safe. So if in any way you feel sick within this time, you can worship from home. The, the church still grants us the privilege to worship from home. So because of the code red, we can still worship 50 people in the church as we are doing, but if you feel a little uncomfortable with, your, with yourself, the way you feel, let's help each other. You remain home and continue to worship from home. Thursday is Thanksgiving Day, and as always, we do have a Thanksgiving Day Mass. And we will still have our Thanksgiving Day Mass, 9 a.m. on Thursday. 
but if you cannot be here in person, I make this special appeal. Once it is 9 o'clock, stop what you're doing and join us online for that Thanksgiving Day Mass. I know this year has been tough for many people. We have had a lot of challenges. But for the fact that we are alive today is enough reason to say thank you to God. So, if you cannot be here in person, once it is 9 o'clock on Thursday, stop what you're doing and join us online for the times giving their mass. And we always ask people who come, just get an item for your Thanksgiving table and we will bless them. So if you are also worshiping from home, around that time, gather around your Thanksgiving table and let our blessings continue to flow to each and every one of us. I had one prayer intention when this COVID thing started. I talked to God and I said, God, I don't want any parishioner to die of COVID. And so far, God has been holding us in that prayer. Let us continue to pray that none of us goes down under the ground because of COVID. We pray that all who get it will recover from it so that at the end we all can gather to celebrate and thank God for his protection on all of us. So that's one reason to say thank God. And that's why I say, if you cannot be here in person that day, nine o'clock, stop all you're doing, join online for the Thanksgiving Day Mass. Next weekend, we begin the season of Advent when we prepare more intensely for the birthday of Christ. I will also want to do some other things extra to continue to build our faith and to continue to pray and pray and pray. So every Monday of Advent, we will have prayer time and benediction. Starting 5 p.m., we'll be here. And if you cannot come here, join us online. Every Monday of Advent from 5 p.m., we have a time of prayer and benediction. And we will be using a prayer book of the church. And so from this afternoon, you will see that book either on Facebook or through the website so that if you want to purchase the book yourself, you have a week to purchase it so that you can pray with us either from home or if you're here. Every Monday of Advent, we'll have time of prayer and benediction starting 5 p.m. It will be possibly a 30 minutes session, you know, to pray and have benediction. And then there's the request about asking me to give some insight about what was going on in my mind when I was reflecting on the items we have in the book that we just released. And we'll be doing that every Tuesday, starting the day after tomorrow, every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. But it will be a Zoom meeting. So also this afternoon, you will see the link to get to Zoom. Every Tuesday, 7.30, we'll be taking one chapter at a time. And I'll be sharing what was going on and maybe we can understand that little piece of book better. But it will be good if you can read it ahead of time. And so if you have your questions, you can have your questions ready before we meet, and then we could ask those questions. So if you don't have the book yet, you can come to the office and get a copy for yourself. 
and if there are people you want to join in this you can also grab a copy for them and share the link for them with them so that we meet on zoom every tuesday 7 30 to reflect on that book so thank you all for coming today and spending time with god and we pray that god will lead us all safely home and continue to keep us safe. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, be my water. Holy Spirit, take control as I'm walking along the road, the road is so narrow. Holy Spirit, see me through, see me through. Holy Spirit, be my comfort. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And have a happy Sunday. You also, Father. Mm -hmm.